What is going on, everybody? I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Chara Kirk. What's up? We're looking at the new Blue Beetle trailer, the final trailer, in fact, from DC's YouTube channel. We would have done this earlier, but we were preoccupied on an impossible mission. Ha <laughs> ha! So if you guys haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Here we go. I want to fly. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah! <laughs> you gotta force it to come out. What are you. <sighs> You're a genius. Well, I know. But what I say? No, 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 no. Oh, shit. It works. <laughs> Did you know what was gonna happen to my brother when you stuck him with this world destroying thing? It's called the Scarab. I had no idea it would activate. It has to choose you. Yeah, use you it. Learn, <laughs> you can imagine. I can create. Wow. Oh, for your family. Makes you unique. You're wrong. My family? That's what makes me strong. Yes, it is. <gasps> oh, I forgot how bad it looks. <laughs> Target the family. Sorry, my mom. I know. You are a superhero, cabron. Aww. Y'all take shots if y'all hang up. Whoa. You're the blue beetle. That could use that arsenal right about now. God, you never ask. Hell yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, Grandma! <laughs> Go, Abuela! Why, why do we get so much gratification out of seeing a grandmother have a minigun and fire it off? Because what? inherently grandmas are bad asses and the world needs to remember that. And so I love it, you know, because we're always thinking about grandmas like knitting or crocheting or making mm -hmm. food which you know we love and appreciate but also it's just so awesome to see her just pick up that gun and yeah. be like i'm defending my family no absolutely uh this has i think we kind of commented on this before this has a lot of different elements from other superhero films that we've loved and appreciated and does a great job of combining all that stuff into a an adventure that feels somehow fresh even though it's borrowing those elements from other comic book films, both DC and Marvel, I'd say. Well, yeah, I mean, it's an origin story, right? It's a young hero. I love the emphasis on family here and also just seeing a, a lovely, wonderful Latino family front and center, you know? And I hope that they really nail the culture and everything. I mean, obviously that's that's not my heritage, but I think it's so awesome to be able to see that representation yeah. here on the big screen and hopefully it's done right because like i'm loving the family angle of it so much right now would you think they'll do a crossover at some point with spy kids spy kids 
I'm just, it's another Hispanic yeah. family <laughs> sure, why superhero not? franchise. Yeah. I'm like, well, that's the only one. And I think George Lopez is in that as well at some point. I can't remember for sure. Why? What is it with buses? Like, do, do films do films have like a thing against buses? Because they keep seeing, they keep being the victims of superhero damage. Yeah. Whether it's Shang-Chi or uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness or Blue Beetle, it's, the buses are always getting messed up somehow and cut to pieces. I think it's just because it's easy to cut them to pieces and may potentially not hurt anyone, especially if people are just sitting, you know what I mean? But if it was like a bus during rush hour, uh, there would definitely be some human uh, sandwich problems. Yeah, there. so um, yeah. one one uh, great thing that they've shown us here is that we do see him without the, the helmet quite a bit. And I think that's important because um, one of the things that I always get concerned about with superhero films is losing that sense of humanity. And they, you know, accomplish that with Iron Man by having that close up, but there's still a part of me that never forgets. I'm watching a CGI character and then there's Robert Downey Jr. with the close up. So I always appreciated it when Robert Downey Jr.'s mask came off. And we right. do get quite a bit of that here, like this shot in front of us. And same with the villain. It's like, it, it helps us to connect because like the eyes are the window to the soul, man. And so we need those kinds of moments where they're, they're without the mask, even though that's a little bit more vulnerable. Right, yeah. I, I think as well, it's really helped by the fact that uh, our lead actor here, he he's giving a lot even in the voice, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yes. So I think that even with the mask on, it's, it's going to be fine because yeah. he's, you know, he's giving 110%. Yeah. That being said, though, I mean, I have no idea if this is all practical because I feel like with Iron Man, a lot of it was CG. This texture to me looks very lifelike. Like yeah. it looks like that's an actual costume that's on him right now as opposed to a fully CG thing. And it's entirely possible that it's fully CG and I just can't tell. But the fact that I can't tell if it is, is you know, it speaks to its quality, so. Yeah, I don't know a lot about the character of Blue Beetle, but mm -hmm. one of the things that they showed in this trailer that I really enjoyed was the fact that uh, his little, I don't know what it is, the AI or the machine that lives inside him was like, whatever you can imagine, mm -hmm. I can make. Yeah. And I think that's so cool, cause like he, how imaginative must this young guy be? And also I love that, you know, one of the things that he imagined was a, a super cool anime-like sword that yeah. he was fighting with. I'm like, yeah, let's have fun with it. Like how outlandish can you go? Yeah. Let's go there. Yeah, we've seen that kind of thing with Iron Man and with Spider-Man, the Tom, uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man. And we also saw it with Upgrade, where there's this interaction with this AI with a voice, personality yeah. that's sort of assisting this character as he progresses and gets better at what he's doing. Uh, this shot right here is a very popular one with superhero films right now. I first noticed it with like Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We saw it in The Batman, you know, where it's that very, very tight choker shot as they're flying around. And there's something cool about it. It's in vogue right now. Right, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. So, but overall, I'm really enjoying the tone of this. I, I like the neon kind of computery, beetle vibe of the text well, that they're, they're doing. Well, they're also like really keeping that purple tone throughout the movie as well. Because if you if you look, a lot of the lighting mm -hmm. is kind of purpley. Susan Sarandon. Brandon is wearing purple. Mm -hmm. Like they're really, really leaning hard into this color palette. And I don't mind, yeah. like, you know, go for it. Why not? Yeah. Uh, the, going back to the, the last thing I'll say is going back to what you had mentioned earlier about the family. Uh, I, I think that they have chosen some cool kooky characters to yes. be the family members. And it adds comedy that I, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying so far. Yeah, I'm like, looking forward just, to like, see it. Just, just the way she reacts. With the, <laughs> to the, <laughs> yeah, she's like, <laughs> <laughs> and Susan Sarandon, uh, you know, I grew up watching her. She's a, she's a favorite of mine from just my childhood, watching her in Thelma and Louise and The Client and all kinds of stuff. Right, she's um, fantastic. She's a great actress. Uh, you know, it's cool to see her back in action as a villain. I'm like, I, can't, I, I would have never pegged her to be a villain in a DC film, but... I'm happy that she's here because she's fantastic. Yes. So, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Do subscribe, please, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up. Let YouTube know you enjoyed what you watched if you did. I'm Jabby Koei. This is... Achara Kirk. Peace out.